welcome to this online tutorial for Nuclei. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to track your first video of cell nuclei. To get started, let's load up Nuclei. I have this saved to my applications folder on my Mac. Now Nuclei is loaded up, I'm going to navigate to where I've downloaded the HL60 simulated example from the Nuclei Track website. Here, I'm going to create these example data HDF5 files. This is also the example data and example parameter HDF5 files by clicking enter on each of the text inputs. This loads up two files for storing the data that describes both what's going on in the field and also the parameters um, which we can use for other fields of view. So these two files have now been created. And if I re-enter this folder, you'll see that this is the case. So these two files are now there. I'm now going to select load from file names. Navigating into the folder, I'm going to select the first image in this time series of single plane TIFFs, as well as the last image. Clicking load images now automatically loads all of these images. Now these images are loaded, I'm able to segment them. So I click on this segment button here, I transfer to the uh, segment user interface. I can scroll through the video to see what's going on here. And I can also, so I'm going to choose a good frame now to start segmentation. I'm going to go for this one because here there's lots of nuclei with different things going on. The clipping limit allows me to basically choose what the maximum pixel intensity I want to work with is going to be. I'm going to select this to about 0.07 here. This nicely highlights the nuclei. I'm then going to remove any background intensity variation by using this background blur slider here before blurring the images to highlight where the centre of each nuclei is. This threshold operation then selects a sensible size for the, or then basically identifies where these nuclei are whilst the smallest object filters out noise from this thresholded image. This function distance to intensity then determines how to what degree the center or sort of the, the most intense pixels within the mask within this masked image are due to the intensity of the image before or how far the pixel is away from the edge of the binary threshold image. So I set this to one, you can see the pixels right at the edge of the sort of the mark the, of each segment of the lowest values whilst right in the middle have the highest. Whereas at zero, this is basically exactly the same image as the blurred image that we saw previously. I'm going to select this to I'm going to set this to about 0.3. I think this will be a good value. Next we have separation distance. Separation distance is important for identifying or ensuring that only a single point is chosen per nuclei. Where it's only this value of two pixels here, you can see that many of the nuclei have multiple sort of peaks of intensity inside them. If I boost this separation distance up to six, we can see that not a single there's only one peak per nuclei now. This is what we want. Finally, edge blur, blur identifies the edge of the nuclei, and this is necessary for the watershed algorithm we're about to form. Finally, this ratio this watershed ratio determines to what degree the nuclear the sort of watershed pushes out from the centre. So high value here leads to big, large or much larger segmented areas than a low value. I'm going go for about 0.05 here, as this seems to match the image in the bottom right corner quite well. I'm going to now save these parameters for segmentation. Um, and I have the options here to also filter cells which are touching the edge of the image or, or use sort of the multiple cores available to me on my laptop. But I'm going to leave this, uh, uh, as this image, or sort of this series of images is not very big, I'm just going to proceed without using multiple pro multi processing. So I'm going to now segment the entire movie by pressing this button here.
cool. Now that the images are segmented, I can progress to see how whether I'm happy with the segmentation results. Looking at this set of images, Nucleus, Nucleus Tracker has picked up all of these sort of cell segments well, and I'm happy with the results. If I want to, I can export these labelled images here into their own individual um, TIFF files. Although Nucleus Track is saving the, the results of segmentation as we go along. So if we want, we can reload it and carry on this process from where we left off. So I'm now happy with this segmentation. I'm going to go Extract Features, and this is going to pull out all of the features about these segments. This goes much faster than the segmenting image loading bar before. Nucleus Track works on probabilistic tracking. So I now need to select examples of where we have different types of sort of cell segments. So the majority of cells have uh, contain a single, or the majority of segments contain a single cell, which I'm now highlighting here. However, there are also examples of where a cell is about to undergo mitosis, and where a cell is coming out of mitosis. So these two cells here are on the on their way to mitosis, and oh, and these and then these two cells have are exiting mitosis. So now that I'm happy with the data, oh, you saw me click it accidentally as, again earlier, but I'm just going to update it further. Um, I'm going to collect save trading and this is going to save sort of save all of these classes for the uh, for classification and tracking later. I also have these parameters up here which I can adjust. Um, and these modify the area in the past frame that the algorithm searches for. Just, so cells which are moving loads, might, you might want to increase the search distance and say reduce the migration cost. Whereas cells which are remaining pretty static, we can reduce the search distance to speed the algorithm up, and we can also increase uh, the migration cost. Also, going to well, Nucleus Track is also able to handle cases where a segment or a sort of a cell disappears from a frame or two, um, and <clears throat> This parameter here controls the maximum number of frames that a cell can be missing for before Nucleus Track um, loses the track and has to restart it. So I'm, I know that these parameters work quite well for this video, so I'm just going to leave them as they are. Go ahead and classify the cells and now track them. Tracking has been completed, uh, and you can see that Nucleus Track has identified 398 segments, which are effectively which now feature in the, the track cells. So I've now opened this user interface here. Um, and this one, I'm just going to maximize this window, allows me to view the tracks and make amendments to them. So if I select one of these cells here with Z, we can now see we've got tracking data describing this cell over the entire period of imaging. We can see in frames, sort of, I guess frames about four, five, and six here, um, that this cell is undergoing mitosis now. So you can see here, this cell undergoes mitosis and carries on after. We can look at other, other cell tracks here. Um, we can see that Nucleus Tracker has quite successfully got all of these tracks, uh, which is quite unsurprising given these cells are very easy ones to track. So, we can also use Nucleus Track to uh, make changes to these uh, tracks. So, if I highlight one of the cells, I can, or if I highlight one of the cells, I can swap tracks with any other cell in the image. So, I press X or select swap tracks from the button menu over here. I can then click on another cell, and you can see that it's now swapping tracks after this time point. So I'm now move on time points, we can see this track is now assigned to these, this cell here. This is this is now sort of basically broken the track a bit, so I'm just going to correct this again by pressing X to swap it back, selecting a new cell, X to swap back, and now all the tracks are correct again. Can you, I can also delete segments from Nuclear Track using the button by pressing V on the keyboard or selecting remove segment and then reassign a single segment to this, or a single track to this segment. So you can now see that this jumps over to that cell for one frame and back again. I'm just going to recorrect this again by adding a segment back to this, selecting this track, and again assigning segment here. Um, we can also jump about the video by pressing W and then clicking on the graph. So if you want to go to the very end, I can press W, skip to this end here, or press W and skip to this end here. Finally, we can now export all of these cell, this, this cell tracking data to a CSV file. So I'm going to click this button here, export all to CSV, and this is now going to output in the same directory that I saved my that I've saved my parameters in my data 
this uh, a CSV file. So I go to documents, HL60 example, and you can now see example data.csv has been saved here. And if I open this with numbers, we have to see all of the tracking data from this video. So here in this, we have track ID indicating which track or which of neutral is being tracked. Uh, and you can see at the end of the video, there'll be a bunch of sort of ones which can track for less time indicating cells which come out or daughter cells which have come out of mitosis. We also have all of the features described in the nuclei here, as well as intensity information about this channel that we've tracked. So this concludes our first tutorial, um, and stay tuned for the next tutorial where we'll look at more advanced processing of images and how we can look at a, you know, a, a set of images that we might actually encounter in an experiment from the laboratory. Thank you for listening and see you next time.